Let's open them up. Scalpel. Are you looking at me, Dino? We're losing adrenaline now. You'll never amount to anything, Pat. Everybody clear. You scum. We've lost him. Day to you viewers, and I'm not lying there because there's a certain smell in the air. Is it the smell of ripened fruit? Is it the smell of freshly cut flowers? No, that smell is cup final atmosphere, a smell more rarefied and intense than my ridiculously expensive gentleman's cologne. That's because today sees the final of the Games Master football tournament featuring Phil Babb and Dean Holdsworth. But there's another less than lovely odour lingering. The smell of fear. And all the pants in heaven are rapidly filling up in anticipation of the execution. As you know, I'm a big fan of the death move. Those finishing moments of a beat-em-up which leave no one in any doubt as to who is the victor. I was intrigued then, the other day, to receive a letter from a character calling himself the Executioner, claiming he could pull off every possible death move on every conceivable game. I decided at once to put him to the test by collecting together a vast number of beat-em-ups and requiring him to pull off three death moves in a row from three randomly selected games. Let's see how hard this executioner really is. So, old people everywhere, put out the cat and prepare that letter of complaint as we meet the executioner. Welcome to the show, executioner. Nice to meet you. Now, uh, I have to say, you're a wee bit small for an executioner. You're kind of like a Fiat Cinquecento of the execution world. Well, do you really think so? Well, I am the best games playing maniac in the world, and that is why I'm here. Okay, and the outfit, where did you pick that up? Well, come to think of it, my mother made it for me. Right, uh, okay, that's fine. She's obviously done a fantastic job there. And you do reckon you can pull off any death move in any game, yeah? Any game. Well, we're going to put that to the test. Ladies, the bag, please. In this bag, we have 12 beat em ups. That's a total possible combination of 147 death moves. I'm going to ask the executioner to pick three of them at random, then he's going to have to pull off the death moves for the characters we've secretly allocated in each game. So, executioner, three games, please, from the bag. And we have Mortal Kombat 3, Primal Rage, in your own time, executioner. Bit of glove fumbling there, thank you very much. And finally, Killer Instinct. Those are the three games while the executioner gets ready to execute. And we'll find out finally whether he is just in fact a sad wee small guy with an inferiority complex. Let's cast a quick glance newswards. Proof that the next generation consoles have made their mark was provided this week with the news that PlayStation title Destruction Derby has become the fastest selling CD-ROM ever, shifting 10,000 copies in a fortnight. The release has been accompanied by an ad featuring an attractive lady draped over a TV, the kind of gratuitous titillation that we at Gamesmaster find thoroughly disgusting. Meanwhile, Sony's arcade partners Namco are putting the finishing touches to their latest beat-em-up, Soul Edge, a Tekken hugs to Shinden type situation, with 3D graphics and special moves that make French nuclear testing look dull in comparison. Soul Edge will be in arcades next year with a PlayStation version following ooh sometime later. Are you frightened by technology? Nah, didn't think so. Kit. Games on the Net is a new video that sets out to explain how to find and play multiplayer games on the internet. It's pretty useful and features the most mutated presenter ever in the bizarre facial shape of Davy Winder. The Yahoo site actually makes me shout, Yahoo! Every time I connect to it. What? Yahoo! It's out on November the 20th. We have the executioner here who reckons he can pull off any death move in any game ever invented. We are trying him on three. Dave Perry is standing dangerously close to help me out. Dave, I'm going to call you boss. 
Boss, this boss is fine. It's suit, suitable for the challenge. I think, okay, Dave. Well. So generally, what is the tough thing about fatalities to pull off? It's definitely the adrenaline rush you get at the end of a fight. You've had a hard fight, you've battled through two or three rounds to beat your adversary, and all of a sudden you've got a split second to remember this intricate move. And when that move becomes instinctive, that's the mark of a great fighter. And do you think he'll do it? I think he'll do it. This man is awesome. Okay then, thanks Dave. Right, best of luck, Executioner. He has to pull off three fatalities in a row, and he gets the joystick. Anything less, and it's a Sayonara Executioner. Best of luck. Let's go to the first fatality on Mortal Kombat 3. The character we selected for Mortal Kombat 3 on the PlayStation is Cabal. The Executioner will need to show mercy to his opponent before he can pull off the death move we've chosen, the mutant rhino animality. Cabal wins. So off the Executioner goes, he's playing the Cabal on the left-hand side. The guy, what do you call that, Dave? Some kind of mask and hood type thing? It's a very, it's a very strange arrangement, isn't it? Very much like the Executioner's himself. Maybe they're, they're cohorts or something. <laughs> okay. And uh, at the moment, I thought it's not fantastically relevant to this. His energy levels by you can see the top uh, part of the screen. It's all fairly blue, so he's doing okay just now. But here, it comes, well. here comes the fatality now. This is the secret. No, it's not. He's got to show mercy first if he's going to pull off an animality, which is what the game's master set in. Okay, so now what's this mercy one given then? Well, it's given her the energy back. She can come back into the fight. Now he's finished. Now he goes, and this is going to be the animality. And here it goes. The screen's gone dark. And Beautiful. It's... Mutated radioactive rhinoceros fatalities, ahoy there! The executioner does the first fatality correctly. Now we move on to fatality number two, which is on Primal Rage. For Primal Rage on the 3DO, we've selected professional big hairy monkey block character Blizzard, who specialises in the oh my god, he's gone right over the moon mega punch. Rage. So off goes the executioner then on Primal Rage. He's playing Blizzard, who's the pink and blue uh, King Kong look like, I guess you would say, on the left hand side. And this executioner, I tell you what, he's fierce, he's frightening, Dave. He's scaring me. He is very, very scary, and he's piling into Armadon, who is the dinosaur. And he's really, really bloodletting on the ape. And what he's got to do, obviously, he's got to weaken the, ape, weaken the dinosaur. We want to see him start staggering. And then he's going to go for the two of the moon fatality. Okay, let's see. He doesn't have uh, his opponent, doesn't have that much energy left. This executioner really is as fearsome as fearsome can be, and there's no doubt about that at all. He's Here we go. Oh, here he goes. Here he goes. A stagger. Is it going to stop punching? There he goes. He's punching him in the face. Now watch the background. He's going to punch him into the air. And he's going to disappear into the background. You're going to watch carefully. It's a punch frenzy. Where's that perspective? There, there he goes. goes. <laughs> in the drink there. The second fatality conquered successfully. Let's move on to number three on Killer Instinct. For this, we've got Orchid and her modest unzip move, which forces her opponents to take a testosterone tumble. Dave, how tense is the execution I'm going to feel just now? Well, your average gameplay would be very, very nervous of the challenge of this magnitude, but the executioner has nerves of steel. OK, well, let's see how he does on that. We're coming up. He is going to be playing Orchid, who is the uh, lady in the fantastically fetching green outfit on the left-hand side, playing against uh, some kind of, what's his name, Dave? Saber Wolf. Saber Wolf, aptly named, because he has a wolf and he smells like a saber. <laughs> I have no doubt. Now, the thing with Killer Instinct that you're looking out for is the combos. They can put some awesome combos together, and the Executioner will be looking to show off on television, obviously, and he'll be trying to put some really large combos together. Some nice effect. leg and sword orientated action there, Dave. There you go, that's a killer 16-hit combo. OK, now he's going to have to play through the whole game to get this fatality, isn't he? He is. He's going to have to go all the way to the end. He's taken one bar of Saber Wolf's life already. He's only got to take another bar. So more luminous animal action there in this game. That's right, yep. She can turn into, like, a fire leopard and leap at the Saber Wolf. That takes off loads of energy as well, but it's the combos that do the real damage. And as you can look at Saber Wolf's energy at the oh, top... Oh, yes! Ooh, the Executioner is so fierce! We yeah, have, I don't know if I can take much more fierceness. We're very, very close to I'm that end move. I'm too young and I'm too bold. The energy bar's very low and Saber Wolf, we must be getting close now, Dave. Is the move for all the lads, here it, it comes. Back, back, forward, forward, quick punch. What's she going to do? Yeah. And she's blown her legs the That's a rubbish reality, which means that the Executioner's Challenge has ended in dismal failure. So, Executioner, if uh, patheticness was measured in ice cream, you have two scoops as big as Birmingham, I reckon, after that. What was your excuse? My excuse, it was just a bad day. I don't care what's happened here today. I'm still the world's best games player, and I am the executioner. Any chance to say that less melodramatically, executioner? <laughs> Maybe is this your next career change? You're going to drop the executioner and become pantocutioner or something? No way. No? I'll be back. Games Master will see me again. I guarantee it. 
Okay, well, uh, thank you very much for joining us, Executioner. Uh, maybe next time you can come on as the bloke who puts the fluffy bits in fluffy toys, and uh, that might be a little bit more apt. But uh, thanks anyway, that's enough of him. We don't need to take up any more of our time with that whatsoever. Now, there's been uh, many great double acts in history. Morecambe and Wise, Vic and Bob, Bill and Ben, neither of whom are going to be turning in their graves at the prospect of our very own Rick and Dave reviewing combo. First up on PC CD-ROM, Endorphin, the game that caused all that controversy a while back with more subliminal messages than my disco dancing. Endorphin and a fun more like it. You have to go through hundreds of incredibly tedious levels of grids where one square on the grid will be a different colour and you have to guide your block with its multicoloured sides so that the top side is equal to the same colour as that square. Now this game really is dull. It's like a Rubik's Cube for the brain dead. And people seem to be worried about some subliminal messages going through it, driving their kids into a trance-like state. Actually, that state is called boredom. They say this game is controversial due to its subliminal messages, but the only controversy about this game is why anybody deemed to release a game of this complete pantness in the first place. Oi, Rick, I'll do the pant jokes around here. And finally, the PlayStation beat them up Tekken, which is actually Japanese for can you hold my coat love while I beat this bloke about the face and neck? We like Tekken, we like Tekken a lot. The fluidity of movement on the characters is extraordinary, and I particularly like the special moves. As Rick said, it has the fluidity. It actually feels good to play. When you pull the moves off, they feel right, they're satisfying. This is a great game, and it's another must-have for the PlayStation. And where most beat-em-ups fail is in one-player mode, but Tekken holds its head above the water even in this aspect. Each character has their own special end-of-level boss that you have to defeat right at the end of the game. I'm telling you, it's awesome. The whole world has gone taut all of a sudden. My muscles are taut, my nerves are taut, because shortly we have the grand final of the Games Master Football Tournament, Phil Babb against Dean Holdsworth. The girls are going to try and relax me while we take a short break. Oh, that is fantastic, guys. Welcome back to Games Master Stadium, where we're quite literally three minutes, 30 seconds away from kickoff. And if you want, you can start your stopwatches now to test me if you're feeling particularly pedantic. The rest of you can recline as we see what Games Master has in store for our grand final. For the final of our football championship, I have come up with something rather special. The incredible arcade simulation, Virtua Striker. These stunning visuals and super fast gameplay of this instant classic should make for a thrilling final, as our two champions battle it out for the joystick. The action will last a minute and 45 seconds, and as always, in the event of a draw, the winner will be decided by penalties. So let's spew forth no more idle banter and immediately welcome onto the Hallowed Games Master Turf our two finalists, Phil Babb and Dean Holdsworth. <laughs> welcome back, Dean. Welcome back, Phil. OK, right. Obviously, this is probably the biggest match either of you have ever played in. What's some of your pre-match superstitions you follow, Dean? I think it's nice to get, nice to get a good rub down before the game, get stretched out properly, make sure you don't pull anything, obviously. Uh -huh. uh, have you had a good rub down? The girls oh, yeah. have looked after us, haven't they? They have. <laughs> Thank you, Phil, for that. There was actually no need to <laughs> say that, that yeah. Phil, it has to be said. Uh, what about yourself? Are you happy with a rub down or do you need a little bit more? No, definitely a rub down. Yep. And nothing more than that? Nothing more than that. You're quite content? Yes. You don't do the NC thing, leaving your shirt off until you get in the tunnel no, limping I'm not as muscular as him. No? I don't know, you're quite a fine figure of a man. Oh, geez, mate. Don't mind me saying <laughs> We know each other well enough at this point in time. Right, OK, before this gets a little bit too interpersonal, if you'd like to uh, dribble on behind me, we'll go up to kick off.
And the punter's favourite, Rick Henderson from PC Review, is joining me for the final. Rick, obviously football is going to be the winner today, but how do you score? Well, what they've got to try and do is get it onto the flanks and cross it in. Um, it's going to be a very, very tight battle in the middle of the park. Also, when you pass, look for the short pass. And when the player's running, he'll look to where your other player is, is actually positioned to try and pass it in that direction. That's OK, thanks way. very much, Rick. Right, best of luck, Dean. Best of luck, Phil. Whoever is in the lead at the end of the game will win that golden joystick. Let's go to kick-off. So Dean's in the blue of Italy and Babi's in the yellow of Brazil. We'll pin one minute 45, just a single <laughs> period. Oh, there's a free kick already, Rick. Oh, uh, only he is. <laughs> He's only the one... Uh... Oh, mind, Rick? All right, we'll resume the as soon as possible, Rick. <laughs> that is a throw into Italy. Uh, suddenly I realised that uh, English wasn't my first language. <laughs> but uh, no, he's going down the flanks, which is the... This guess. Is Bob you can here. see a man coming from behind you if you saw that he was actually looking behind himself. OK, free kick, he's gone for the shot. Oh, he's, he's, gone for he's just shot. narrowly passed there by the Babster. You reckon corners are a good way to score in this Corners thing? are an extraordinarily good way. All you have to do is swing it in to the far post and there'll always be a man ready to head something in. OK, we've uh, haven't had many at all. Oh, that's a terrible foul there by Phil Bam. a lot of bad play, bad, bad. OK, now here comes a free kick. It's a shot on this side. Oh, he's cut the defence on the wheels, but it's an atrocious oh, shot. He tries to pass it into the goal, but passed it to the uh, corner, corner flag. flag. I think you'll find. OK, we've got 31 seconds left, still no score. That's another useful looking ball from Italy. It's a bit of a scramble. Oh, the uh, Brazilian defence played well there, though. Up the flanks again, though, for Phil Bab. Rick. See, they're passing it around. That's that's the key to how to win this game. Oh, and running out of play no, is not the best way. OK, 17 seconds left here. Not much time. That's oh. another one. That's atrocious. No, that's a good position. It's a good position for a free kick. He may be able to turn this into the top right-hand corner here. OK, here he goes. He's lining up. Oh, yeah, it's a lovely little chip. Shit. It's through. He's got a second chance for the shot, he takes a shot! Oh, oh, no, just the bar there, and the oh, time is ticking away, we're into injury time. I don't think the goalkeeper saw a lot of that ball there, I we don't just think stood did. I think we're, we're sliding down penalty road rapidly here. <laughs> Babster's got another chance, he puts the spectator of the ball forward, but it's speculative in the extreme. He certainly avoided... Oh, a little bit, of, <laughs> a little bit of dangerous oh, pass oh. back at the end, but the final whistle goes, which means it's nil-nil, we're going to penalties. So it's very tense here as Italy steps up for the first penalty. That's Dean Holdsworth, probably feeling a little bit tense there. Just better start his run up there. Takes the shot straight at the keeper who gathers it and saves it comfortably. So Phil has a chance to go one up here. Tries to change the angle, a little bit different here. Yes, straight in there, in the middle. Dean Holdsworth steps up for the second penalty. It's his best of five here. Oh, calmly slots yeah, that one in, mate. Typical full-back penalty, really. It certainly is. <laughs> Don't go much Oh, that's oh, a great save. It's all there, but it's one penalty all. And Dean Hosma slots in that one. It's 2-1 to Dean. Here comes Phil. There he goes. Oh, oh good it's save. save. Fantastic, with the bottom part of his elbow. 2-1 to Dean. And oh, he save. saved it. He's still in it, because that would have won it for Dean. Still 2-1 to Dean. Here comes Phil, he's got to score this really. And he does, okay, this is it. It's 2 all, it's down to these two kicks. Bit of Dean Holdsworth calmly slowing away. He's got the knack and it's now. Here comes Babsy. Yeah, Phil has got all the pressure riding on him now. And it's a save, it. that's it. Dean Holdsworth's keeper saves it, which means after the penalty shootout, Dean Holdsworth is the winner. Well done, Dean. Commiserations, Phil. Tuesday. Well, Phil, listen, in the semi-final, you demolished Graham Rousseau 4-0. What happened today? It was just uh, just the tail of the striker versus the defender, wasn't it? Came down to penalties and the better technique won. It was. It was uh, a bit unfortunate for you. Dean, what, what were you thinking when you were came to that penalty shot? Did you reckon that you had the, uh, the gumption to see it through? I think so. The cliche is you're happy to be there, but when you're there, you might as well, you know. <laughs> win it while you're there, and uh, it was nice, obviously, to uh, win on the shootout. It certainly was, and thanks very much again for coming on over the past couple of weeks, guys. Unfortunately, there can only be one winner, and the winner of our annual Games Master Football Tournament, who will go home with a Games Master Golden Joystick, Dean Holdsworth! <laughs> Now it's time to leave heaven and all its heavenliness and walk amongst the mortals for today's feature. We're here at Magic Edge in Silicon Valley, top multiplayer action simulation type situation. 
And we're here to find out exactly why Americans like my friend Randy are quite literally spending lots of time here. Magic Edge in Silicon Valley, California is the world's most advanced multiplayer experience. Up to 12 would-be pilots bundle into large articulated pods and engage in some top Top Gun style dogfight situations. The Magic Edge Center itself is designed to add to the sense of realism, encouraging the kind of unironic enthusiasm only Americans are capable of. With teams, leagues and special call signs, everyone seems to take it very seriously. Now Gerard, you're actually in the, the leagues that they run here, how, how do they mm -hmm. work? Well, they have two different leagues. They have a league for cadets, and then they have a league for aces. Right, you're an ace. R right, yeah. right. What's, what's your call sign when you fly? Saxon. Saxon, why? Yeah. Um, it just seemed like a good war name. Uh -huh. <laughs> How much money have you spent then on this from day one? Oh, probably in the four figures range. So over a thousand dollars? Yeah, well, I've been flying for a year. Right, Nicole, uh, unless I'm very much mistaken, you are a lady. And, uh, not, uh, last time I looked, yeah. There's not, not a great deal of them in this place. Why is that? Well, um, perhaps it's because of the uh, physical attributes that most of the gentlemen possess here. How much time then would you say you spend here in a week? Um, not as much as, as, you know, the frequent customers. I come here maybe like twice a month. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy it, but I don't want to overdose on it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. What I don't understand is like why you got these guys here, and some of them are here quite a lot. I'd say some. Do some of them come here like every day? Would you say? Yeah, probably. Why do they want to sit in a dark pod when they're in like one of the sunniest parts of the world? Probably because they don't have a life. Why don't you tell us how you really feel, Nicole? Well, despite the fact I have a full and rewarding life, I was contractually obliged to have a go. Okay. Unfortunately, I've been accused of being ironic in a built-up area, so I have to fly a mission against uh, basically every single American on the entire planet, and they're all going to try and shoot me down. But uh, I think I'll take them. The complex 12-player combat is monitored by a controller, in this case, a rather fit one, who was forced to call me by my call sign, Love Daddy. Being a highly decorated combat pilot in real life, of course, but I don't like to talk about it, I took to my jet fighter like a duck to water, sort of. I'm trying to confuse the Americans by flying very badly. Love, Daddy. Sorry? Switch your weapons to your missiles. Okay, Love, Daddy, you're the closest one to me. Okay, American guys, come and get him. You think you're hard enough? Unfortunately, I hadn't realized the Americans had been quite literally <laughs> holding back. Hey, pilots, you have permission now to shoot down Love, Daddy. Uh, oh, no, we hit! <laughs> Well, unfortunately, I didn't do uh, quite as well as I thought I had. I didn't defend my nation terribly good. The reason is, probably too tight a trouser to be wearing for this kind of thing. A lot of the Americans had looser fitting trousers, but it was great fun anyway. Well, we're now completely funned out for today, but at least the executioner has found a job worthy of his stature. In fact, life is a lot like the executioner's costume. Laughable, ill-conceived and frequently itchy. Bye-bye. Cantona. Ooh, ah, Cantona. Ooh, ah, Cantona. Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. I'll do this. I'll do this.